Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here and welcome to my review of Doctor Who The War Machines. The last story from season 3 of Doctor Who and also William Hartnell's final complete story due to the smugglers being completely missing and the last episode of The Tenth Planet also being missing although that has been completed for DVD thanks to animation but in terms of every single episode surviving this is the last one and it's also the only one with Ben and Polly. Uh, like I said, there's plants as well as also Power of the Daleks, Moonbase, Underwater Menace, and coming up, the Macro Terror, they've been finished with animation or reconstructions in the case of um, Macro uh, not Macro Terror, Underwater Menace. But, again, complete surviving story. No story from Season 4 completely survives with all of the episodes. Um, I would say Temp Planet comes the closest with only one episode being missing. Um... <clears throat> So, um, so this is the only Ben and Polly story completely surviving with all episodes surviving. It doesn't have to be finished by animation or completion. So, last Hartnell and only Ben and Polly surviving story, uh, completely surviving. The next completely surviving story after this will be The Tomb of the Cybermen, which I will say now is one of my all-time favourites. But we've got an entire season before that, so, um, never mind. we'll have to wait a bit longer. But The War Machines is also a brilliant story. I really like this one. In fact, I thought this was going to be a little bit low on my ranking. Not too low. It's still going to be in the top five. But lower than it was originally placed. But after watching it, I moved it up. I will tell, I'm will i not going to spoil where it was or where it is now. I'll save that for the ranking itself, which will be coming up next. But The War Machines uh, is a great story. I just really enjoyed it. The plot is basically the <clears throat> there's a new computer that can think for itself and created by some humans but then it begins to not only does it start thinking for itself but it begins to think humans are obsolete and start taking control it hypnotizes people and creates war machine gets them to win well gets people to make war machines to take over the earth and uh, stop humans but it needs doctor who or rather the doctor I should say, it's what uh, Wotan, the machine, calls the Doctor, Doctor Who. Um, so, they, Wotan needs the Doctor to help, but the Doctor keeps <laughs> missing it. It keeps failing, and eventually the Doctor is leading the fight back, scientifically, of course. Um, get a bit of the army in here, which are pretty much pre-units. Uh, pre They're, uh, basically, yeah, the... Equi uh, 1966 equivalent of units. I think, according to Doctor Who uh, TARDIS data core, unit was founded later in the year. Apparently, the Web of Fear takes place in 1966. So, unit would come along a little bit later, maybe next year in the invasion. Um, or two years. Or two years. Um, but, yeah. So... Unit was only a few years down the line, certainly, um, certainly be introduced in 68 in terms of a TV screen. So this is basically the, maybe it was stuff like this and the events of the Web of Fear that got the government pushing for it. Of course, Resolution has had a, a Brexit style joke about it, about how it's suspended due to funding. Yay, go Brexit. F fucking Brexit. Hopefully unit is back in force in series 12. Anyway, so the Doctor enlists the help of a young sailor called Ben to help investigate uh, after Dodo is possessed and then sent to the country to recover. Fun fact, Jackie Lane's contract ended uh, after episode 2, so she could not appear again after afterwards. And I suppose she chose not to renew the contract, not even make an appearance at the end of part 4. So Dodo's gone, she goes to the country and then she just doesn't come back. Wow. 
weak, weakest companion exit so far. This is also a carbon copy of any of the others, but God, you could have done better. You could have just asked it, it's all right for you just to come back and say, hey, I've just decided not to come travel with you. It's still weak, but it's better than what we got. Um, however, we do get two new companions, Ben and Polly, although half the episode Be uh, Polly is possessed, and although in the first half she seems to be a great character and seems to be helping out a lot, and she and uh, Annika Wells and Michael uh, Kreens had such great chemistry in their first scene, you can buy them being best of friends later, even lovers uh, later, uh, that we see later on going down the line and further in expanded media. The scenes at the Inferno nightclub uh, where Ben, where Polly is basically talking to Ben uh, when he's a bit in a depressed mood and she's kind of imitating him a, a little bit is basically the, is a example of what the relationship is going to be further down the line in this if with their journeys however i think this is all at this point certainly it might even be their best bits and they've only just met more well, at least uh, got reacquainted after a previous meeting a few nights earlier There isn't that much else to say apart from that the location shooting is great and it just looks really nice and it's also a ton of fun. Did not drag. I think it slowed down a little bit pace wise in the second half but it was still fun, still engaging, still really enjoyable and had lots of great moments and the doctor trapping the war machine in the uh, small areas was really great. And yeah, this is a really great story. So I'm going to wrap up this review and I will give The War Machines a well-deserved 10 out of 10. It is fun, enjoyable and a superb way to end the Hartnell era. When I was reviewing The Savages, I hadn't... Uh, well, I'd seen this story a few times before, but it had gone down a little bit. But when I was reviewing The Savages, I knew I liked this story quite a bit, but I had no idea I'd like it again, even more when rewatching it. But then again, I could see the same for The Massacre, I suppose. Um, I thought that was going to be weak, but that actually turned out to be pretty good, to be honest. And this one just shot up in strength. It was really good. So The War Machine is a great story. And, yeah, if you haven't seen it, I strongly advise you to check it out. It is one of, if not, uh, certainly one of the best Hartnells out there. And it's got the one of, if not the best, William Hartnell performance. So, yes, it's, uh, that is a great story. So great. And it's a nice little archetype for the present day Earthbound stories that we'll see so much of in the John Pertwee and the Chris Ruxton, David Tennant, Matt Smith, uh, Peter Capaldi and Jodie Whittaker series, Chris Ruxton, David Tennant in particular, um, as well as also most of John Pertwee's and a bit of Patrick Troughton's. There isn't really much of the other other Doctors, maybe. Um, there's a few Patrick Troughton's, there's the old Tom Baker, some Peter Dav uh the old Peter Davison, actually may uh, no, maybe just one Peter Davison, Resurrection. I might be wrong. Um, the old Peter Stevenson, uh, old Colin Baker, again, might just be Attack of the Sidemen, uh, Survival with McCoy, and Battlefield, so the odd McCoy. TV movie was technically the not-too-distant future, 
but it's mostly been with it's mostly with John Pertwee and the new series Doctors that we see the Earthbound stories, especially John Pertwee's first three seasons. And we have had Planet of Giants and the first episode of An Earthly Child, but I think this is the archetype for the Earthbound present day stories or story set in the not too distant past slash not too distant futures example. 2012 to compare to 2005 2006 um or 1999 uh, 2000s compared to 1996 so yeah it's uh this is a great story so thank you for watching and next up will be my doctor who season 3 ranking and then after that i will be reviewing the second dalek film Daleks Invasion Earth 2150 AD and there will be a mini Dalek film ranking after that and then after that we will be on to season 4 with The Smugglers. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. <laughs>